Are you looking to use Asana for client management and onboarding, but you're confused on the right way to set it all up? Great. Well, not great that you're confused about it, but great that you found this video because I'm about to show you the three best ways you can do this, covering a way for all types of businesses. So keep watching and I will walk you through it. Hi, my name is Samantha. I am an online business manager and Asana system specialist. In my business, I help other online business owners set up and get the most out of the free version of Asana. If you want to learn more about my services, you can check out the description below for all the links. All right, before we get started, I want to let you know that in next week's video, I'm going to show you exactly how I use Asana for my client management and the actual day-to-day -day use of it. If that's something you want to see, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. All right, so there are three ways that you could set up your clients in Asana, depending on what your business looks like and how you work with clients. First, I'll show you what I personally do, and then I'll show you two other ways that may work better for you. All right, so as I said, this first way is what I do when I first sign a new client. It's also great for coaches who don't have any like big projects going. You're just doing that ongoing coaching support or for service providers like myself who work in their clients' project management to manage their clients' projects. So my clients currently use Asana. They have their own Asana account. So that is where I go in to manage their projects. So that's why this way works great for me. So what I do when I sign a client is I go and I create a new project under my client team. I actually have templates for this. My exact templates, my exact processes with walkthrough videos are available in my course Asana Essentials. If you want to check that out, head to the description and the link will be there. All right, so let's say that this demo space is called clients. As you can see, I have a client team over here already as a team, but let's say for the purposes of this video, we will just change this to client. And then each of these would be client names. And then I love color coding. So I want to have a different color for each client so that when one of their tasks pops up on my, on my task, uh, then I know which client this is for just to have that easy reference just when I see that color. All right, so now say I am signing a new client. So what I will do is I will open a new project. This will be client three. So I'll create my project. I like it in a list format. And then what I would do is I would add a section for like info. This is where I would have any important information relating to them. I would add a section for onboarding. And then the tasks under here would be the my onboarding process. And then I would have any pre-work task that would go here. And then the next section I would have is ongoing work. And then I would set it up like that. So as you can see, these are all going to be tasks that I do in my business for my clients. So all the back end tasks get done this way. So any administrative tasks, like the onboarding tasks, right? So you're going to list out all your onboarding tasks underneath there. And then any pre-work that we discuss. So maybe I want to put my kickoff call in there and then anything that we discuss in the kickoff call pre-work, like maybe I'm setting up their Asana account right before we get started on the actual work. And then any ongoing work, this could also be called recurring tasks that is going to go in here. So any reminders that I have for clients, like sending invoices or charging the client, things like that. And then the information would just be exactly what it sounds like. Any important information that I want quick reference to would go in here. If you wanna see like exactly what this looks like with all the tasks, all the strategies, all the workflows, uh, that is available, as I said, in my Asana Essentials course, you can grab that there. And then, so because this is just the administrative work, then I would go in and work on my client's actual projects in their account. So that's why this way works best for me. My actual client project tasks happen in their account and just the back end, my business related to client tasks happen in my account. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so the second way that you can do this, this might work better for your business, is you can separate your clients into teams. So this works really well if you have multiple big projects that you're going to be storing in your account. So this is probably if they don't have their own project management system. In this case, you could also invite your client to that client team and work with them in that way. I do recommend this for any circumstance where you are going to be inviting your client into your Asana account. Because if you're using the free account, which I love to help you optimize, you're not able to have private projects that you can share with others. 
So in that case, you would want to invite them to the team, which would be private and not seen by your other client. So for example, what you would do here then is you would rename this. This would be your client name, right? So this would be client one name. And then these projects underneath, instead of being the different clients, they would be the different projects, right? So this would be project one, or maybe you would start actually with, you know, admin stuff, right? That you just have for your business. And then you would start listing out the projects. So project one and project two and so on, right? All right. And so the third way that you can do this that may work better for you is you can actually condense this process into one single project. So this could work well if you have project start dates and end dates and like a set process of deliverables. It's not like an ongoing retainer client. An example of this could be a graphic designer and you're creating a logo or a thumbnail for different clients or a social media manager who has maybe been hired for just one month and they just want all the content for that month. Any non-ongoing client service. <laughs> All right. So in this case, again, it depends on what your business looks like. If this is your only service, you might want to call this something else. But if you have ongoing clients and those like one-off clients, then you could have them all in this client's team. All right. So how this could look, I'll just use this one as an example. So if these are your only clients, you might just want to call this clients or you might want to call it, you know, graphic designer clients, one-off clients, whatever you want to name it, whatever works for your business. All right. And then I recommend using the board view for this. And then your sections could be, you know, onboarding, work in progress, work submitted, and maybe it's like waiting for approval, and then offboarding, and then complete. So it could look something like that. And then you would have your client as the task. So then this would be client one, client two. And then as you work on their project, you move them through the pro the process. So You'd start with onboarding. As soon as you sign the client, you'd add them here, go through your onboarding workflow, and then, and you probably have that as subtasks. Uh, you might have a bunch of subtasks depending on what your work looks like, but uh, you can determine that. Uh, and then you, you would just move them through the process. So work in progress. And then once you know, you're know you done and you submitted it for approval, you put it here. And then once that is done, you go into offboarding and then complete. And you can add any other sections in here or delete any of these whatever works for your unique business. But this is just an example of what it could look like. There you have it. Those are the three ways that you can use Asana to work with your clients. So as you saw, you can expand or condense how you set this up in Asana, depending on your business's needs and how you work with clients. All right, remember next week, I'm going to show you exactly how I manage my clients in Asana and the actual day-to-day -day use and what that looks like. If that's something you want to see, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in that video. Bye.